Diplopia, or double vision, is something that you must take very seriously because it can be caused by an intracranial aneurysm or an intracranial mass. When I examine a patient with diplopia, there are two signs that make me very concerned, a dilated pupil and other cranial nerve involvement. The third cranial nerve innervates the superior, inferior, and medial recti, as well as the inferior oblique, the levator palpebrae, and the iris constrictor. A complete palsy of the third nerve usually causes both horizontal and vertical diplopia, ptosis, and medriasis. Of most importance, however, is the status of the pupil in the third nerve palsy. A spared pupil, in other words, normal function of the iris constrictor in the setting of a complete third nerve palsy, suggests that the etiology is ischemia due to diabetes or hypertension. These can typically be followed expectantly for a full recovery to occur in 6 to 12 weeks. A dilated or blown pupil, on the other hand, indicates a compressive lesion, in the most worrisome case, a fatal cerebral aneurysm. This is why it is essential to recognize the clinical signs of a third nerve paresis, and if the pupil is blown, a CT angiogram must be immediately obtained to rule out a life-threatening aneurysm. The second critical step to do in any patient with diplopia is to examine the other cranial nerves. Tumors in the posterior fossa or in the cavernous sinus may cause abnormal function of the third, fourth, and or sixth cranial nerve, as well as any of the other cranial nerves and tracts descending to the spinal cord. The best clinical approach is to use these clinical findings to localize the area of pathology and then use an appropriate mode of neuroimaging to investigate the structures in this area.